Hello everyone, this is May 29th and 30th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. These two days represent some of the most hectic and stressful days over the course of the eruption and it's going to really escalate quickly. So let's get into it. It's coming down Leilani Boulevard, probably halfway to Capone. Oh. What hit the camera there was a piece of reticulite. This is a very gas rich, foamy piece of rock that was erupted from the volcano, erupted from fissure eight, carried on the wind, and as it did, all of the gas escaped it, so you're left with a rock that's mostly air. I'm gonna have to grab a piece just to show you one second. All right, I got two pieces of it, one right here. And see, it looks like a normal rock, but there is just a ton of little gas pockets, all these little cells in it, and then a little one here. I wanna show just how brittle this rock is. So just with these two fingers, right, this rock breaks into nothing. And you can break it all the way down to dust. Same with this one here. This is a USGS thermal map from the afternoon of May 28th. And in it, you can see the reactivation of Fisher 8, this lava flow that's moving to the north towards Poiki Road, as well as the reactivation of Fisher 18 and Fisher 22. The ocean entry at this point has diminished significantly. Throughout the night, Fisher 8 remained extremely active with these 200 foot tall fountains. This lava flow is still ponding, it's still spreading out in multiple directions, but primarily moving to the north where it has crossed Poiki Road and started to move onto the property of the Puna Geothermal Venture towards Highway 132. From the ground, the side of the eruption is incredibly impressive at Fisher 8. While the fountain isn't exceedingly tall, 200 feet isn't a very large fountain for Kilauea, it's just a huge amount of volume. It's almost unimaginable. And this lava flow is primarily moving to the north, and it's about to raise some questions about where is it going to try and go. To understand the difficulties in projecting where the lava flow is heading, we need to look at this one map here from USGS that shows the paths of steepest descent, the blue lines. And we need to focus on the blue line just to the left of PGV. Now this blue line here has it cutting across Highway 132 to give the path that is most likely for the lava to take. The issue is, is these paths of steepest descent lines don't really indicate where the area is flat. And where the area is flat is where things can go off course. When there's some slope to it, then these lines are pretty accurate. But when it's flat, they kind of don't capture the complexities of that area. Here we see the distal tip of the lava flow coming from Fisher 8, and it is currently on the Puna Geothermal Venture property. It's cutting across this cane field as it makes its way towards Highway 132. We fast forward a little bit later that same day, we see that the lava flow we were just looking at has fanned out across the area that would be considered flat. It's also crossed Highway 132 to the north, but there's a significant amount of lava looking like it's moving to the east, wrapping around the Puna Geothermal Venture. Not to be entirely overshadowed, Fisher 18 is also putting down a rather significant lava flow that day. It's moving straight towards the Ala Anui Warm Ponds from the Halakama Ina area, and it's progressing about a mile and a half a day. It ends up getting within a half mile of the Warm Ponds and Highway 137 before stopping. In addition to trying to figure out where the lava flow is going, there's also the question of what happens if the activity tries to shift even further up the rift zone. There's no guarantee at this point in time that activity is going to stay at Fisher 8. It has been active all night for the past couple days, and it doesn't look like it's going to let up, but we've seen how these fissure eruptions have been progressing up the line, up the rift zone for the past week and a half. In the morning overflight from Mick Calver, we see fissure 8 still pumping. And this time is about where the transition into the next phase of the eruption begins. A phase with even hotter, fresher magma most likely from the summit itself, has made its way down into the rift zone and is being erupted into the subdivision of Leilani Estates. Now this lava is just so much hotter than the stuff that we've seen before. The eruption is 
now in its height. This is the phase that is the apex of activity for the 2018 eruption. Here we are back at the flat area we were looking at the previous day. And we see that the lava flow from Fissure 8 has started to separate into several different fingers. Now these fingers are trying to make their way down to the ocean independently of each other. But by separating the lava flow into so many tips, it has slowed the advancement of the flow as a whole. Most of these fingers that have separated from the main lava flow are moving to the north, including one that's on that path of steepest descent that we were previously looking at. But the primary lava flow has been moving down Highway 132 on the road, running parallel to the road, until it kicks off near the Noni Farms Road and starts making its way to the jungle. The thing is, is the path of steepest descent from here takes it to Kapoho. At this point, there's a new question about the evacuation of Kapoho and when should it be called, or at least advised, of the potential for there being an evacuation. From here, the lava flow really only has one path down, and that takes it through the coastal community. But the rate of advancement is volatile. It's fluctuating between fast movements in steeper areas where it's moving at roughly a half mile an hour to flatter spots where it stalls out and reduces down to only a couple hundred feet an hour. The previous evening on May 29th, there was a community meeting with the authorities and the community to discuss the ongoing eruption. And we expected at this point for the authorities to make it clear to Kapoho residents that they should begin the evacuation process. Instead, nothing was really said. It was kind of kept on the low. And with each passing hour, Hawaii Tracker, we were becoming more and more concerned. Les Pedersen at this point in time puts out on the night of the 30th an evacuation notice on behalf of Hawaii Tracker telling the Kapoho residents to begin that process now. We didn't wait for the authorities to make that call. An hour and a half later, at 1.30 in the morning on May 31st, the authorities finally pulled the trigger and began a pitch black evacuation procedure that was pretty wild considering the amount of time that we had prior to that and the rates of advancement we were seeing that night. The operations that night also created issues for the first responders and Hawaii Police Department that were tasked with going into the areas just upslope of Kapoho in order to notify residents as well as monitor the ongoing lava flows. The thing was is that a lot of the officers that were going into these areas, into these farmlands, into these papaya fields, were not familiar with the area. Going at night, it's a very easy way to get lost. And that's exactly what happened. One officer went in without cell phone reception, without good radio reception, got lost, finally got cell reception, put in a call for backup. A second unit went in to retrieve them, got lost themselves, put in an additional request for backup, and finally a cop that was familiar with the area went in to retrieve both of them. And that just highlights some of the complexities that issuing an evacuation order in the middle of the night presents itself. That'll do it for May 29th and May 30th from the 2018 Kilgway eruption. There's really so much going on in these couple of days here that it's hard to condense it down into a 10 minute little segment. It could easily be a half hour. There's probably things I missed, but I hope this conveys some of the urgency, some of the drama, some of the fears that residents were going through at this very critical part of the eruption. Until the next one, aloha.